Good morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, Damascus and Facebook family and friends. It's good to see everybody and good to enjoy another day that the Lord has given us. We are gathered here to worship him. He is worthy to be worshipped and adored. Amen. 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 We're going to begin in our worship and want you to join in with us as we lift God and go to God with a song and a prayer. So we want you to stand where you are. Uh, lift your voices if you know the song. Uh, clap your hands. Just give God the praise. Give him the glory. For it all belongs to him. Burden. Lord, there's so much going on in this world today, Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
But we just don't have to worry. We just continue to trust and believe in you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, everything is just all around us, Lord. It, it seems like it's bad, Lord. But Lord, we don't understand, Lord, but we know you do, Lord. Oh, yeah. And Lord, we know that you will make a way, Lord. Oh, yeah. As you said, Lord, uh, that no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no mind has a man, but God has prepared for those who love him. And Lord, we, we thank you, Lord. And Lord, we know you allow things to happen. We may not understand your will, sir. But we simply have to trust you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. In your name we pray, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless our pastor. Bless. Yes. Yes. As he bring the word, bring the message, Lord, that we may go out and tell someone the yes. good news, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we ask you to continue to cover us under the blood of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Listen, open your Bibles with us. Uh, we're going to continue in the book of Malachi, chapter 2. Amen. We're going to continue in this because God is speaking to the people and he's bringing judgment against them. So let us look at chapter 2, verses 1. And we'll read down uh, through verse number three. Listen, you priests, this command is for you. Listen to me and make up your minds to honor my name, says the Lord of heaven's armies, or I will bring a terrible curse against you. I will curse even the blessings you receive. Indeed, I have already cursed them because you have not taken my warning to heart. I will punish your descendants and splatter your faces with manure from your festive sacrifices and I will throw you on the manure pile. Then at last you will know it was I who sent you this warning so that my covenant with the Levites shall con or can continue, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Verse 5 is very important. He said the purpose of my covenant with the Levites were, was to bring life and peace and that is what I gave them we're going to stop there and just for a little while this morning from this passage I like to pull out these thoughts um, the warning to leadership the warning to leadership amen. Amen. amen father we thank you and we bless your name this is a day that you have made and we will rejoice in it your grace and your mercy is so overwhelming to us when we think about all that you have done and all that you are doing the things that you give to us and the things that you keep from us that could harm and hurt us father we thank you for your grace and your mercy yes, as we come we do ask that you will open our hearts and our minds so we can hear what you're saying to us yes, lord. lord let us not think you're just talking to them back then but you are talking to us right now Yes, so we ask you, God, open our ears and our hearts that we can receive what we need to receive so we can do what we need to do yes. and be who we need to be. Yes. I agree now, God, is my prayer behind the cross that you would be glorified is my desire. For I ask it with my sins forgiven in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Leadership is so important and it's real. Yes. And all of us have leadership within yes. us, right? right? Everybody leads. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everybody leads. That's just the reality of it. Everyone wants to lead uh, in one capacity or another. In life, we have leadership. We have business leaders. We have leaders in community. We have um, leaders in the home. Amen. Uh, mothers are leaders. Fathers are leaders. Teachers are leaders. Uh, we're filled and, and the world is filled with people that lead. But God here speaks to his people. Amen. We do know that everybody is not God's people. Amen. Everyone's not a child of God. 
Only those that have accepted and received the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ is a child of God. And God is speaking to his people. We do know that Old Testament covenant, he selected Israel, uh, the nation of Israel, to be the light of the world at that time. Amen. They were the ones that were to show forth his glory, to lift up his name and lead others to him. We do know that they failed. Now we are the people of God. Yeah. We are light that's set upon a hill, a city that cannot be hid, the children of God. So God speaks to us as we read him speaking to Israel. Now what stands out about Malachi, I think about when we think about and we talk about Malachi, we want to talk about bring your, all the your, uh, gifts into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. That's the main thing we talk about, main thing we t think about when we talk about Malachi. And that's what preachers normally do to get you to bring your money to the church. Amen. Amen. Just think about all of the sermons you've heard, the messages you've heard out of Malachi, and it centers around you bringing your gifts to the church, that there may be meat in God's house. Amen. 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 But when we read it, as we've discovered these few weeks, we've looked into this passage, God is speaking to the priests. He's speaking to the leaders. He's speaking to leadership. Amen. Leadership is so important because leadership determines the path uh, and the position of the body. Right. Amen. 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 That's why the New Testament warns us to be careful of seeking position of power because there's great responsibility that comes with that. God holds us at a higher level of accountability because we are leaders. Amen. 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 Leadership is so important because God, as he talks to them through Malachi, he said, the leaders have failed and it's the shortcomings in the leadership that have caused the people to wander from God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Leadership. So we find here that he says in uh, verse 1, he said, listen, you priests. Say he's talking to the leaders. Yeah. Yeah, he's talking to the leaders here. And he condemns their actions. He warns them of some things that are lacking. And I like to point those out to us today. And the thing is, when you look at Israel and where they had fallen to, they have fallen to the place where they had a ritual without relationship. They had a form of godliness but denied the power thereof, as Paul would say to us. When you look at them, they were cold in their uh, relational uh, position with one another. They had become cold in their worship to God. They had lost their reverence for God. They no longer held God in our awe and, and reverence and respect. Amen. They had become calloused in their worship. They had become uh, complacent in their service and worship to God to the place where they decided... God just would get whatever they had left. Yeah. They no longer referenced him as God as we said last week. Yes, they gave one-tenth, but the one-tenth, the ten percent that they gave was the worst that they had. They didn't give God their best. Yeah. And that's a warning. That's a, 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 a measure of where you are with God. When God does not, you don't see that God deserves your best, then you're not really in the right relationship with God that you ought to be. You're not where you need to be because if you hold God where he should be held, you would understand that all that you have belong to him. Everything that you're able to accomplish is because of him. Whatever God allows in your life, it's because God does it. That 100% belongs to God. None of it belongs to you. And when you have God in the right place, you realize this. God only asked me for 10% of the 100% that he lets me have. All right. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Because if God didn't allow it, you couldn't earn it. Amen. You couldn't get it and you wouldn't have it. All right. All right. So the leadership, he talks to the leaders here. And listen, you got to understand that. 
The leaders are responsible because as goes the head, so goes the body. Oh yeah. All right. All right. Amen. When the leadership is complacent, the body becomes complacent. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. When the leadership lost its enthusiasm and fire, the body loses its enthusiasm and fire. Right. When the leadership don't hold God in reverence, then the body don't hold God in reverence. Right. Right. Because they follow us, and that's why Paul said this. Paul knew where he was with God. I, I, I like Paul, because I remember what he said. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I don't care what people think about me. You might look at me as being this being foolish and, and all of that, but I'm not ashamed of the gospel because I know it's the power of God. And Paul lived his life with that mindset, that passion. Because he knew that it was God that changed his life. It was God that saved his soul. It was God that made him whole. And he wasn't ashamed of that. And he lived his life that way. When you look at Paul, he lived his life in reverence and respect to God. That's why Paul could say, follow me. As I follow Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. So three things I want to tell you and I'm going to let you go because when we look at leadership, this is so important. As leaders, we need to make sure that we have a passion that's unshakable. Right. We got to have a passion that's unshakable. Malachi said to them, you've lost your heart. It's not in your heart anymore. You've lost your passion for God. You've lost it. You've lost it. You've allowed things in your life to shape your passion and to take your passion for God, your enthusiasm for God, your desire to please God. You've allowed it to be shaken. So leaders, leaders, we must have a passion that is unshakable. That's why Malachi said you do not take it to heart. Your passion has faded. Your spiritual vitality is depleted. God warns you that if that happens, what is God going to do? I'm going to curse that that you've been blessed with. So sometimes you got to be careful. The very thing that was a blessing to you now is a curse to you because you've fallen and, and you left God. You cannot leave God. You cannot lose your respect for God because when you do, God will hold you in contempt for that. God will hold you accountable for that. Amen. They understood, listen, they understood how important it was because they know that God chose the Levites to be the ones that ushered in the reverence of God to the people. The Levites, the leaders, were the ones that were to teach the word of God to the people. Amen. They were to lead. They were to lead the people in the way of God, in the will of God, by the word of God. But now they not doing it. They can stand. They lost their passion. Now it no longer matters that much to them. Just anything will do. They've come to the place. Listen. They've come to the place where they've lost their passion. But as leaders, we got to have a passion that's unshakable. In other words, it doesn't matter what comes against us. It doesn't matter what we're faced with. It doesn't matter what life presents to us. We've got to still hold God in that place that belongs to Him. God still has to be central in our life. He has to be number one. Oh, God said to them, listen. Because you've lost your passion, you no longer have the heart for me. You think you're getting by. No, I'm going to humiliate you before the world. I'm going to remove my hand from you and allow the enemy to come and to curse you. You think you got it made. You think you're doing all right. The reason they did was because they're trusting in everything but God now. If you read through Malachi, you'll find out they're intermingling with the rest of the world and doing things contrary to the way of God. And God says, no, that's not acceptable. All right. My name is going to be referenced. Last week he said, listen, if you don't give me the glory, I'm going to get it from the Gentiles. God will be glorified. Amen. Amen. God will be praised. God will be reverenced. Yeah. 
The question is, will it be from you or somebody else? Amen. All you have, God gave you, and all that you acquire, God will give you. You got to understand something. You got to give God what's due Him. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. So, you got to have a passion that's unshakable. Oh, yeah. Second point is, you got to have a, a message that's unaltered. Yeah. You got to have a message that's unaltered. You can't have different messages for different people. You can't cater to the people. You've got to be sure. And you've got to stand on who you are and whose you are. Any leader, the Bible says that we are called to leadership. And as the men and women of God that have been called to leadership, we have a responsibility. Amen. Amen. We can't teach what people want to hear. We got to teach what thus saith the Lord. You got to give true instruction. Because when we get the word of God, that put the people in the place of God and the way of God, and they walk in the blessings of God. And when we don't, when we try to cater our message to the people and, and, and uh, hold some people one way and some people another way, guess what? We bring a curse upon them because it's the word of God that's sure. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and of the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's the word of God. Listen, as leaders, we've got to know the word of God and we've got to stand on the word of God and understand we can't change the word of God. We got to be careful with that because it's only the word of God. And see, he gave the word to the people, to the Levites, to the leaders. And they were to give the word to the people. But yet we find them changing their message. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. If God says it's not okay, it's not okay. If God says it's right, it's right. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. It doesn't matter who it is. Right is right and wrong is wrong. We can stand on that, leaders, because the Bible says, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture. Not some scripture, but all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. That's right. For doctrine, reproof, correction, instructions in righteousness. That's right. It's the word of God. We need to give the people of God. And listen, stop standing. Don't stand on your opinion. Stand on the word of God. How many of us got an opinion? How many of us, our opinions change? That's right. But the word of God, the Bible says, will never change. It says in Isaiah 40 and 8, the grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand, how long? Forever. That's right. So we can stand on the word of God and what happens to us, we measure by our Emotions, and we measure by our opinion, but we need to measure by the truth of God's word. And as leaders, and as teachers, and as proclaimers of the word, we can stand on the word when we have nothing else. Amen. And the truth is, we have the word and nothing else. Amen. 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 Matthew 24 and 35 says it like this, heaven and earth, shall pass away. Oh, yeah. But my words shall not pass away. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. So we can't have a message that's altered. We got to have a message that's unaltered. It cannot change. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God's position hasn't changed on anything that he established from in the beginning. Amen. 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 Sometimes we think that God's position changed because our culture changes. 
No, God's position does not change. God's word does not change. Amen. Just because the times change, God's word is timeless. Amen. So as leaders, we got to be careful because they were guilty of changing the word of God. Giving the people what they wanted to hear and how they wanted to hear it. God is never happy when we do that. We're always violating him. We're always sinning when we find ourselves in that position. So we got to have a message that's unaltered. Third thing we find in verse number nine, it says, and we got to, as leaders, verse number nine, so I have made you despise and humiliate in the eyes of all the people, for you have not obeyed me, but have shown favoritism in the way you carry out my instruction. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. It's in the book, verse number nine, it says you have shown favoritism in the way you carry out my instructions. As leaders, listen, God warns them about their bias. He said, as you've got to have an attitude that is unbiased. you got to have an attitude that is unbiased. You can't treat one person one way and another person another way. You can't favor one person and then not favor another person. Amen. Amen. Favoritism is something that we all wrestle with. Favoritism is something that we all battle with. There's a temptation that we all face. The truth is, we do. We might not want to admit it, but that's part of our human nature. We somehow seem to favor some over others. Amen. 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 That's the people you like more than you like others. Truth is, you do. There's here some people you don't like, and you don't admit it. Don't, don't, don't say amen. <laughs> don't say amen right there. But there's some people you don't like, and you know it. There's some people you can't stand. Amen. And I hope and pray to God that it's not without reason. But I want to say that your reason is still not valid enough. <laughs> you know, some people, you love growing up, you say, you know, I don't, I don't like them. Why? I don't know. I just don't like them. Yeah. I don't like the way they look. They can't, ain't gonna do the way they look. I don't like the way they talk. I don't like the way they walk. I don't like the way they dress. I don't like where they live. Just all things unnecessary. Amen. Amen. But as children of God, that shouldn't be us. And especially as leaders of God, we can't favor one over another. The priests were, they were endorsing faulty faith and sloppy living. They were showing partiality. And we can't do that in the house of God. Amen. We can't favor one of another. Sometimes we've been guilty and people have been guilty of favoring those that contributed more in the offering than others. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's a big giver. Let's listen to him. Let's, let's, let's not preach against what he's guilty of because he's not giving. That's not the way God wants us to be. Amen. That's right. You can show partiality in God's house. What stands for one stands for all. Amen. Influence in God's house was not for sale. And guilty leaders, the Bible says here in Malachi, that they're being despised and amazed by the people. Listen, because God pulled back the curtain and showed the people who they were and the people despised them for who they were. They thought they were getting over. They thought they were getting by. But God pulled back the curtain. How many know what's done in the dark will come to the light? Amen. They altered the message to suit their lifestyle. See, it's wrong as long as you're doing it, but then when I'm doing it, it ain't wrong. If it's wrong for you, it's wrong for me. Amen. And if it's wrong for me, it's wrong for you. Amen. You know how we do. Oh, but he's a preacher. 
but it's okay that you're not. You're a Christian. Amen. Yeah, but you're a preacher. No, it's wrong for me, but it's also wrong for you. Amen. That's right. God is not a respect of persons. There's no, there's something, well, I can do that because I'm not a, a leader. No, you can't. If it's wrong, it's wrong. So a leader, they're warned against their bias. Malachi told, or God told Malachi to tell them that, listen, you're being cursed. And if you're not careful, not only will you be cursed, but your seed will be cursed. Because you are not following my word. You're going to be cursed because you're not doing what you've been called to do. Because you've lost your passion. And you've come, you become complacent in your service to me. You're not leading the people in the right way. You're not showing them how it is to worship God. You're not showing them how it is to reverence God. You're not showing them what it's like to love God and to walk with God. And I've called you to that position, so I'm going to curse you. Amen. Not only that, you, because you strayed away from me, you lost your passion and your message has been altered. You changed your message. You're not preaching the truth of my word like you're supposed to because you're trying to cater to everybody. You have become biased and you shouldn't be biased. You should be unbiased. As a matter of fact, you've gotten to the place where you favor one over another. And listen, you've got to, yes, understand that you've got to treat everybody alike. James, he warns us about that in the New Testament. When he gets into chapter 2, he talks about the way we treat people that come into the church. He said, you're judging one over another. Oh, yeah. You see one come and he's dressed up nice and you invite him to the front. Yeah. You're trying to favor those that you think are influential and can help you. But listen, God wants you to understand that you're not to be a respecter of persons. Amen. Right. James said to us in James 2 and 8, yes, indeed, and it's good when you obey the royal law as found in the scripture. And that is love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, yeah. So as leaders especially, we've got to love everybody. Right. Just like we love ourselves. Right. But I stop by to tell you, God is saying that to you as well. That we've got to love others as we love ourselves. Amen. He said, but if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. Oh, yeah. You are guilty of breaking the royal law. Yes, you got to understand something. You can't think that you're okay because you keep some and you break others. Because God is concerned about people. Yes, and he says to them, he said, because of what you're doing, yes, I made you to be despised and humiliated in the eyes of the people. For you have not obeyed me, but you have shown favoritism. He said, because of that, all that's going to happen, you're going to be cursed, and you're going to be laid out before the people. You're going to be humiliated and uncovered. But I want to tell you something about our God. You need to not leave with your head down, but you need to know that God is, a, yes, a loving God. And he is a forgiving father. And I heard him say to them and to us that all have sinned and come short of God's glory. But the God we serve is so faithful to us and he's filled with so much mercy that he said if you would confess your sin, I'm faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I heard, I said I heard. I heard him say to them that if you don't change your way, that you're going to find yourself cursed among the men, and you're going to be cursed for generations to come. But I stop by to tell you 
You don't have to fear the future because we have a faithful Father. And the God we serve is so loving and gracious that he gives us warning after warning. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, all you need to do is bow down on bending knees and look up towards heaven and say, Father, I sinned against you. And I want to tell you something. He will forgive you.
Amen.